Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering some tips and tricks on Freeform. Now Freeform is an app that Apple released with iOS 16.2. It is still in beta iOS 16.2, but when it comes out publicly, you will then know exactly what to expect from the app. I have a whole video going over the basics of Freeform, what it is, how it works, and who it is for. I'll have that video linked in the app top if you wanna go check it out. In here, I'm gonna be mentioning some things that I maybe didn't mention in that video that goes more in depth with some some other features that the app has that makes it very nice to use so that was what I'm gonna be covering in today's video for you guys so I hope you guys enjoy it and let's get started so here you can see a list of what I'm gonna be covering so first I want to cover the magnetics of freeform so what this is is it is where your shapes on your little canvas that you have here or things on your canvas snap into place Mag it's kind of like magnets snapping it to place um, to make sure things are more in line and organized so I'm gonna go ahead and add some shapes and I'll show you guys how this works. So as you can see we have two shapes here and if I'm gonna bring this one up you'll see it snaps in place like that and you'll see a little yellow line that kind of snaps it in place. So that's really nice and it also works with other shapes so I can move it more and you'll see it's gonna go ahead and snap to the shape below it as well to make sure that's in line as well. So this just makes it super easy to make sure everything is nicely in line um, and you don't have to struggle with making it look neatly. So yeah, magnetics are really cool to just have a look at and keep in mind when you're organizing your shapes and things on your canvas to make sure everything is in line. Now I wanna take a look at spacing guide. So I'm gonna duplicate this shape again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you guys if I move this here, here you will see it makes this line showing that they are exactly the same distance apart. And it can even do it like this. So let's just go like that, duplicate this again from below. As you can see, it again shows that it is the same distance apart. You can kind of snap it in place there. So I really recommend just using that to make sure everything is evenly spaced out. Even with this shape here at the bottom, if I drag it here, you'll see there, it even shows you some other spacings to make it more precise. So this is the spacing between the, these two shapes and these two shapes. So that's also really nice. So it's not even just shapes that are directly next to each other. You can even space things out a bit further. Um, so that's just what I wanted to show you guys with the spacing. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is rotating objects. All you need to do is use two fingers and then just hold and rotate. I find it easier when I just put one finger down and I use my second finger to rotate and then it's just really easy to navigate how I wanna rotate it. Um, so yeah, that is how I mostly recommend you do this. So that's rotating shapes. It's really easy to do. You just need to use your fingers correctly and then it works pretty well. Um, obviously you can rotate other things other than shapes. So text, you can also um, rotate. So let me just type something out here and then it can hold down and then just rotate it again with two fingers. So it's not just objects, you can do it with text as well. Really easy to do. Now I wanna cover the connection between shapes. So this, we're gonna go to the shapes tool here at the top and we're gonna go ahead and go to the basic section here this option here it just looks like a simple um, curve that you can move around I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a bit thicker by holding down on it and here you'll see some options so I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust the stroke a bit you can even adjust the style of the stroke um, the width of the stroke things like that um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go with basic stroke for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and connect this shape. I'm gonna hold down on this blue little icon and connect it to this circle. And this blue handle, I'm gonna also select and drag to this circle. And now these two are connected. I can move the curve around however much I want. Um, and it's just easy to do. And now even when I just move the shape, the curve will go with it, the connection will go with it. Um, and this way you can make good flow diagrams and things like that using shapes and these connections. Um, and you can even adjust this little line here. By the second option here, you can adjust the ends if you want um, a different look to it. So I can put a circle at this end and I can um, put an arrow here. So then this is what it's gonna look like. Also what you can do is click on on here, go to this option here, which is the connection style. So here you can go ahead and adjust whether you just want a straight line like this, 
Here you can have some that's much more um, straight lines that are following like the lines of the shapes, um, which is really nice. Um, you can even adjust with that green line how this line kind of looks and goes. Um, so yeah, you can adjust that. Uh, or you can just go with a curve like we previously did where it just curves like this if you wanted to. Um, so there are different styles also for this connection that you can go ahead and toggle um, that works best for you. But that is how you go ahead and adjust connections between shapes. And I just really like the fact that if I move a shape, the connection moves with it. I don't have to move the connection as well. Um, so yeah, that is how that works. Now I wanna cover combining and masking shapes. Now this is really fun to play around with and make your own kind of creations with shapes and things like that. I'm gonna hold down with my finger until it makes that kind of rectangle and then drag to select more than one item. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this option here. And then you'll see here at the bottom, you have combining shapes. Um, so each one does something different. So first I'm gonna cover this one here. Um, you can see it here as well. It does kind of show you what it does. So this one goes ahead and combines the two shapes together as one shape. So you'll see with these diagrams here, the black part is the part that stays and the white part is the part that is going to go away. Um, so the black part is the stain shape. Um, so let me just show you guys, it's easier to show than to talk over or explain it. So I'm gonna hold down and I'm gonna select this, go to these options again. If I click on the first one here for combining shapes, it's gonna make the blue shape and the gray shape one shape. So then that is what it's gonna look like. Then we're gonna go ahead and select this option here. What this one does, it's gonna go ahead and only keep the part where the two shapes um, overlap one another and the rest is gonna fall away. So it's basically gonna be the part where the gray overlaps the blue. That's the only part that's gonna stay and it's gonna make it blue as well. Um, so that's what that's gonna look like. Then let's go ahead and select again. This is gonna go ahead and take away um, the part where the front shape overlaps the back shape. So the front shape in this scenario is the gray shape um, and the blue shape is gonna stay. So all the gray parts are gonna go away. Let's go ahead and click on that. That's what that's gonna look like. And this one kind of does the opposite of the second one. So here, all the parts that overlap are gonna fall away and only the parts that don't overlap are gonna stay. So like this. Um, so that is how you can go ahead and use masking. But um, this might sound a bit difficult to understand. It's just really easier when you play around with it. Um, and I think just, just will work really well to just combine shapes mostly. I think that's what most people are gonna be using it for. But then yeah, you do have the option for, if I say I have this circle here um, and I want to have like a little triangle cut out of that circle. Then I can just go ahead and select that and go to my masking here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one here. And then that is what it's gonna look like. So it's just really helpful. You can use this if you want to, um, but I just thought I'd cover this for you guys since not a lot of people know exactly how this works. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd share with you guys how this works. Um, but also something, if you don't wanna go so in depth with it, you can also use masking with images, which is really Im easy to do. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add over a circle here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over this image that I have imported. And then all you need to do is select the image and the shape, click on these three dots here and click on mask with shape. And then it will show you basically what it looks like. You can go ahead and adjust the sizing and then you can click on done. And then my image is now in a circle. Just to show you guys, here's an image that has a little more going on. So if I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a basic shape over it. It also just makes some images look more neat when you add a little shape to it. Um, so again, you'd use the three dots, mask with shape, click and then that is that, then it is in a shape um, and it just looks really cool. So that is also something you can do to make your images mask with shapes. And then you can also go ahead and break apart shapes. So um, you will see shapes like this that has uh, more than one part to it. You can go ahead and just click on it, click on the three dots and go ahead and click on break apart. So I'm gonna tap on that and then you'll see 
all these three parts are now individual parts. So now you can easily go ahead and adjust the color of these that um, can be more practical of use. Um, this can also work with like more charts and things like that where you can go ahead and change the cl color of the shapes just so that it works better for you. Um, so yeah, I recommend doing that as well um, with shapes that have more than one piece to it, um, just to add some more color and just, yeah, make it your own. Then I already covered for you guys how you select multiple items. You just hold down until you kind of see that little rectangle pop up and then you can just drag with your finger just to select it. Um, so yeah, that is really helpful. Then you can go ahead and just move them all around but also what you can go ahead and do is um, you can tap on this little icon here and then you'll see here is alignment and spacing options. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one to align these all in a line. So this one here and then you can also click on you'll see these two options. These adjust the spacing. So I'm going to go ahead and space these next to each other evenly. So you'll see that one kind of goes into the middle of those two. So that's also a quick and easy way to just organize things to make sure they are aligned properly um, or they are spaced out evenly. If they're just standing around a bunch of shapes, you can go ahead and just toggle those to make sure everything is even. Um, so that's also easy to do. And then the last thing I wanna cover is grouping. Um, so groups are really helpful when you have a lot of things going on and you're not gonna work on them and you wanna be able to move a bunch of things around. Obviously you don't need to just have shapes. You can do this with sticky notes. Um, you can use this with text, with images. You can select all of that, like we just selected all of this. And then you can click on there and click on group. So then everything is grouped together and you can move it around. Um, so I can go ahead. These are all little shapes. So you will see this here is a line that can move around. This here is a shape that it can move around. And it's very annoying when you're working. Um, so I wanna move this thing that I have to select all every single time. All I can do now is I can just select them all once, go ahead and click on group. And now when I want to move it, I just have to select the one thing and then it will move the entire group. Um, so I recommend doing this, like if you're making tables like this, that will work great. Or like I said, if you want to just go ahead and group individual things. So if I want to group all these sections that I have going on, I can go ahead and do that um, and group them together like this and then move them around all together as a group. So I recommend using groups as well just to organize things more and make them easier to move around as well. So yeah, um, that was my video on Freeform. I really hope this help video helps you out and you maybe learn something that you can apply in your use of Freeform. I can't wait for it to drop publicly. I think a lot of people are gonna get a great use out of this app. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. If you have any other tips and tricks that I maybe missed that you wanna share with people, definitely leave those in the comments down below as well. And if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new, give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out a lot. Subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see my other videos like this and click on the video to see one of my previously uploaded videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!